Hey guys, you've joined us live at Money Control. I'm Anisha Gupta and the focus today is on metals and within that as well, we've seen the iron ore prices continue to gain quite strong. Actually, they are the only ones who are the best performers and closing this year with nearly 25% of gains in 2023. How is it uh, looking forward into 2024 for all of these metals, especially iron ore? For a question on that, we are now joined by Peter McGuire of XM Australia. Peter, hi, thank you so much for joining us. Season's greetings to you. And uh, I I'll start with metals first. And even as 2023 wasn't such a great year, the markets do believe that the next year could be even better. How are you looking at the overall sector to begin with? Well, season's greetings and uh, all the very best from Sydney, Manisha. So thank you. Uh, look, we've got to be very mindful. Uh, you know, it's been very, in one way, it's been range bound. 100 to 140 has been the price over the last year. So it hasn't seen those big blowouts that we saw in 2021 when it hit 220. So I think it's probably up from here. I won't be surprised. Uh, possibly a little bit further upside considering the infrastructure and what's happening as far as shipping and the demand picture from China. So, yeah, let's see if it's 150 can be taken out and possibly even 160 by the end of the first quarter, Manisha. Mm. Uh, you know, with the kind of gains that we've seen and the point being that 60 percent of iron ore clearly gets consumed in China. But while the property sector is not doing so great, Peter, would you say that infrastructure, uh, auto, shipping, these industries have continued to be strong? Absolutely, Manisha. And that's where the demand picture is. And we're conscious as far as the overhang with property. But yes, from a from a demand side, you've had big infrastructure and all the all the infrastructure that goes into um, power generation and shipping and all, as I mentioned, in autos, that seems to be where you've seen a fair bit of the demand. And I don't see that really waning anytime soon from internal demand in China. So we've just got to see how it pushes forward. Um, you know, they account for, well, there's the charter. I was going to say it, you know, it's a huge component. 70 to 75 percent of global demand comes from China. So it's just quite extraordinary, really, isn't it? <laughs> it is. And as you mentioned, $160 a ton is a possibility going forward in the near, next year. So it's going to be a higher price than what 2023 saw, but way off from the all-time highs that we saw in 2021 at around $230 or thereabout. Uh, do you see a consistent, structural, stronger bull run continuing for iron ore? I think it's going to be a relatively, I just want to see how we go in the first quarter, Manisha. We've got okay. naturally a little new year and I want to see how the Chinese buying is. Traditionally, you'll see possibly an uptick as far as buying uh, in that February period and possibly into March. But then I just want to also keep a close eye on and uh, what's going on with the stock market there because it certainly hasn't performed well this year. And uh, that's another part that needs to be considered. But yeah, I, I do feel as though that there's uh, a little bit more upside. It's going to be good to be a holder of mining stocks, Manisha. Mm, so iron ore continues to gain and mining stocks are expected to do well as well. Peter, how would you look at the non-ferrous metals also? Do you think the whole sector actually can perform better than what we did in this year? Well, you would hope so because it's been fairly heavily punched down. And when you're looking at it, I thought that uh, possibly oversold to the downside and I wouldn't be surprised that it bounces and, you know, as they say, a rising tide lifts all boats. Maybe the first boat that's been lifted is iron ore and some of those other ones might get a little bit of a giddy up there. So uh, quite possibly, Manisha, you'll see a little bit further uptick for those as well. Mm. The only positives actually in metals that we've seen in this year have been in copper, which is 2% up. Tin, of course, has seen better gains, but then uh, we don't follow tin as much. And then it has been iron ore. So when you get into next year, would you, uh, you know, and we are off the kind of lows that we saw in this year, whether it has been aluminum and zinc as well. So when you go to the next year, how would you rank up metals in sense of bullish accumulation? Well, you've got to be, you know, keep an eye on copper. I like that as a, a naturally, and that's always been a barometer. It's just under 8,600 a metric ton on the LME. So it's had a little bit of a rally up, you know, considering where it was. And that, again, might be the first, uh, well, the second cab off the rank. First one being all, second one. And then we'll just see how the others go as far as aluminium, lead, nickel, tin, uh, you know. But you've got to see strong demand. And uh, I think that still the world is relatively fragile. So we've just got to see again, 24 is going to be one very, very special year, Manisha. Oh, <laughs> it promises to be like that. So finally, what are the fundamentals that you will watch out for? I mean, I know we're looking at supply disruptions, we're looking at China, we're looking at interest rate cuts as well. But what's your sense on uh, where could be the next game changer coming from? I want to see what goes on as far as geopolitical tensions with the Houthis and what happens there as far as 
look at what the cost is to transport goods in the sense of shipping and the blowout that you're going to see if that um, Red Sea creates a, you know, a, a, a bottleneck and it's a, it's a choke point similar to what we saw, see with oil going through the Strait of Hormuz leading into the sewers, they're going to sail all the way around Africa to come up and, and service all of Europe, Manisha, and they're big consumers. So this is going to add to inflation and it's going to add to the cost of shipping. And uh, that's what I think everyone's got a close eye on at the moment. Hmm. And a final question then, Peter. So, you know, even as we're looking at all of these, and as you mentioned, geopolitics is going to be the major one there. Uh, do you also see these rising freight costs also add up in case of commodity prices? I mean, we do understand on what's happening with Strait of Hormuz. It's a wider, longer route. And then what's happening in Panama uh, so Canal. And then, of course, the Red Sea is another area there. Yes, absolutely, Manisha, because like it or not, they've all got to be transported all over the world and shipping's the only way you can really, besides pipelines, of course. Um, but, you know, when you've, got a, when you've got shipping and you've got such huge seas and in the, what, we, what we transport uh, from, you know, the likes of what goes out of Saudi and what goes out of the Middle East just from an oil side and what's going into areas like, you know, Europe and going through the Suez into Europe itself and the, you know, the consumption there. So, yeah, I think it's very, very delicate. And this is something that's really, um, I think most traders are mindful of and there could be a super spike there. Mm. Well, absolutely. As you said, it promises to be a very, very volatile year going forward. Thank you so much, Peter, for joining us and season's greeting to you, to you again and happy holidays and a happy new year in advance.